Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, it's been a been a ride this last year with uh, foot surgery and all kinds of things, and some taking some time to reassess directions in life and that sort of stuff, which is a story for another day. But yeah, I've been absentee for a bit. But today I want to talk about common problems with the second gen Forerunner and how to fix them. And it's going to be a short video because there just aren't that many. Um, you know, all these old Toyotas, they're super reliable, but each one, whether it's Land Cruisers or different gen generations, have, you know, one, two, or three things that are just a common failure point. Um, that the Toyota designers, like, build bulletproof trucks, but there's little chinks in the armor, right? So we're going to talk about that. And to let you know as well, a few weeks ago I was sitting, starting to organize these years of bookmarks and stuff I collected on second gen forerunner stuff and um i thought man i really need to organize this stuff and so it's easily to get to easily accessible you know and makes sense and you know isn't more difficult than it needs to be for me to find out stuff you know and find things so then i thought i should just make that for everybody you know and since i'm doing it so i'm i'm working on putting that list on my website agilewoodsman.com and i'll put the link below to it as well so on there is all kinds of things about repairs, parts, where to get different parts, upgrades, all these kinds. It's a whole list, honestly. Um, and it's going to be growing. It's like just a work in progress. It's going to be always a work in progress. Message me if you think of something you want to add, you know, something that I missed. Let me know. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be a cool resource for everybody. So I'll put the link below, but that'll, that'll be on my website. So anything you need, you know, your parts shopping. Um, you know, having issues. There's some repair stuff on there. There's some knowledge base stuff on there. Um, all kinds of goodies. So, yeah, I just started collecting it and thought, you know, I'll just make this free and available for everybody. So, yeah, anyway. So, let's get to it. So, second gen Forerunner. Common failure points. There aren't that many. And they're different than other ones. You know, the like third gens have those ball joint issues, that kind of thing, you know, and these don't, but there are a few, there's two common ones, and that sometimes people misdiagnose, and then there's a third one I'm going to throw in as a bonus that isn't really a common failure point, but it's one that people, it's when it does happen, people misunderstand it and end up throwing parts at the car and miss this simple one entirely, so let's get to it. First one is the idle arm. Which is on your passenger side, and it's this guy right here. So that's part of your steering system. So it's this whole assembly here. That's called an idle arm. Now what Toyota did was in here, there's bushings right here at the top and right here at the bottom that allow this shaft that goes through to pivot with your steering as you're turning the wheel. They put plastic bushings in that thing, and those things age and break and shatter especially with off-roading and getting beat up and everything so you'll feel your steering start to wander and start to get loose and yeah it just feels weird like kind of wore out and it is wore out right but it's not the usual things that are wore out you know it's not the tie rod ends or anything else you know it's actually the bushings in here went and you can jack it up and grab a tire and move the tire back and forth and you'll see this wiggling in here and the steering, all the whole steering thing, at first it threw me off and my mechanic off. I had it, had it up on the lift at his shop and all the steering stuff was just kind of wiggling up and down and we were like, what the heck is that? So, how to fix, and this is again is linked on my website. There's people that make custom ones, which are an expensive option. There's also a website where a guy makes bronze bushings or brass bushings, excuse me, to put in here. And... Um, then he'll also have these whole idle arms where he'll, he'll do the install for you and just sell it as it is, which is what I did. And he also puts a Zerk fitting in there so you can grease it. So that's the upgrade I chose to go for. Um, so now I have the brass bushings in here and they should last the lifetime of the car now, like for the rest of my life anyway. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's number one that just was a Toyota had a bad day and decided to go with plastic. So that's fixable. 
and again you can upgrade the one you have or you can have the guy do it for you and you um, can buy that which is not terribly expensive <clears throat> not cheap not expensive or there's people that make full-on customs which is again linked on my website <clears throat> um, which is the high dollar option but if you're you know doing lifts big tires rock crawling and stuff that might be an up you know the way to go number two is the clutch bracket clutch pedal bracket so i'm going to try to show you here it's a little bit of a squeeze oh. i have a flashlight hopefully we can see it in here so up there right there where the clutch where that shaft goes through the firewall right above that is the bracket where all everything pivots on and mine's all new and nice and black and shiny but this thing up right behind that shaft up in that upper left corner will start to develop a crack from flexing and that crack will just get bigger and bigger and <clears throat> what happens is let me get out of there and get comfortable so what happens there is is that for me, what I noticed at first was <clears throat> I could feel a little bit of a click when I was pushing the clutch pedal down, and I could hear it a little bit. And I, I knew what was going on. You know, I just knew that was imminent. And so I just kind of let it play out, you know, and, and finally failed to where I was going home and I couldn't really shift anymore. I had to kind of float shift like you would a big rig. <laughs> um, but as that, as that crack gets bigger, that bracket will flex more and more so as you push in the pedal it won't actually activate you know it's a hydraulic system it won't push the fluid enough and it won't move the clutch enough to shift effectively now what happens is a lot of guys think that like yeah that's something wrong with the hydraulic system you know the slave cylinder or i got a clutch problem you know i can't shift properly blah 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 they think it's a big big issue like something's broken you know and and again this is one of the situations where they start diagnosing and diagnosing or throwing parts at it and changing parts and it's never resolved so it's actually just that bracket needs to be replaced you can go right to toyota and order that so that's you can just go to the parts counter in your dealer or in on a lot of dealers have online parts now so ordering so just order that clutch bracket and change it out so a bit of a it's not hard to do it probably an hour hour or two if you're handy it's just contorting yourself down there to get it um, but there's a lot of instructions online and I'll try to remember to put that on if I haven't already excuse me if I haven't already I'll try to remember to link instructions for that on my website as well on the knowledge base page that I'm making so um, it's already mostly done or it's very far along so that's already a great resource so go check it out um, third and lastly because everything else on these things is just solid as heck, you know? And I know guys talk about head gaskets and stuff like that, but, you know, I'll tell you, I had my Forerunners in 92. I had brand new Jeeps in the 90s, and those brand new were less reliable than my 30-year-old Forerunner with 320-something thousand miles on it. This thing I trust more than the brand new Jeeps. So, the in the head gasket, you know, you guys know my feelings on that. It's there's probably more old to 90s 80s and 90s toyotas than any other make running around and thousands and thousands of these things running around with owners with no mechanical knowledge without any idea that their engine is supposed to be bad like this engine is trashed on the internet and it they're fine you know so yeah as long as the recall was done if you had a recall in yours you should be good all right let's do the last one real quick and this isn't common but it just it is just a a wear point and something that somebody that most people will miss when thinking of this problem so and that's this guy here this rubber hose that goes to your from your air box the resonator into the fuel injection so this one here because it's exposed to the engine heat down there all the time starts to develop cracks on the bottom you'll never see it 
And the symptoms of that are, is you'll start to notice drivability issues, idling issues, especially um, when the engine is hot. Because when it's cold, you know, it's on high idle. You have the cold start injector dumping fuel in and that kind of thing located back there. Um, dumping fuel in. So vacuum leaks and stuff aren't as noticeable. But when on a, you know, you go to the store and you come back out and hot start it, you'll find sometimes that the idle is off or idling way low. Sometimes it'll sputter and die, those kind of things. And I see this problem on the internet a lot. And I've had many times where I've recommended guys go and check the bottom of this one. And they're like, yeah, that was it. <laughs> and it was on mine as well. And so what I did when I noticed it cracking, when I actually eventually found that problem, because I was having those idle issues, and I just started just diagnosing just starting to go through things you know and always 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 start simple always start simple you don't have to get out the multimeter and all that stuff at first just check your basic like fuel spark ignition you know parameters check codes and check vacuum leaks and things like that start simple so i pulled this thing off and just started inspecting all this stuff and sure enough the bottom of that was cracked and so i wrapped it in some gorilla tape put it all back together and my problem was solved so i ordered a new one put it on there good to go so that's really it. Else in these things is just solid, and you know, any car, any old car, you're going to end up having to fix things, replace things, repair things. Things get wore out, you know. But on any of these old Toyotas, it's you know, if you have to replace some steering or replace some ball joints, or you have to, you know, any any of these things you have to do, you're going to do it less on a Toyota, you know, let's just be honest, you know, there's no use complaining about it, it's normal wear and tear, you know, these things are old now, mine's 30 years old, 327 thousand miles, and that this thing is still as solid and reliable as it is, you know, and those clapped out ones you see in people's backyards that are just, that that's an owner problem, not a Toyota problem, that's, that's just, you know, and these things for a long time, let's just face it, they were cheap on the used market for many years, and 20 year olds bought them and beat the crap out of them and did all kinds of stupid mods to them and they're slow so they were just you know on like hammered down full throttle all the time and yeah that's gonna blow head gaskets that gonna wear stuff out you know so um on old toyotas any toyotas clapped out broken ones are abuse misuse and owner problems not not toyota and that goes for first second third gens whatever you know for land cruisers all that stuff so yeah take care of your cars do your do your maintenance and you'll be good so all right guys appreciate you watching and another one coming out soon hopefully we're kind of back in action here so yeah good to see you guys hope your spring and summer is going well talk soon bye